All right, boys, welcome back to BBR. This week we have a very special one, at least to me. We are facing Drewby, formerly known as Mr. Talent, who is somebody who is on my all time list of draft league players you want to play. Everybody has this. Everybody has a everybody has a list of players that they want to eventually play in draft league. And I've hit some of the biggest names on that list A Drive, Wolfie, Pokey Aim. But Drewby is one of the biggest names left on that list. And I get to play him today. And I'm so excited, man. If you have not already checked out Drewby, for whatever reason, he makes fantastic fantastic content man very very entertaining please check him out in the top right hand corner give him a sub if you like it man for real and i cannot stress to you how excited i am for this match guys like i am actually pumped that being said, we came off of a pretty pretty good win last week against Amor, I would say, and what I think is probably going to be match of the season. I don't think it's going to come close. The first ever Pokemon Scarlet and Violet timer ever, which is just insane to say out loud. Going to be hard to top that game, but this week, I'm happy to tell you guys, this team came easy to me. I finally was able to build a team like I meant to build a team, like this team was supposed to be built this way, and I'm very excited and very happy that I get to use this team in this way, especially against Drewby. With that being said, you guys do know our team, Drewby's team consists of. Before all that though, did you know only 45% of my viewers are subscribed? 45%. If every single person watching this video subscribed, we could quite literally double the channel size. Do you know how crazy that is? Help me achieve my dreams, man. Click that subscribe button if you have not already. And if you think you already have, do me a favor and double check. Very scary threats such as Palafin, Hisuian Lilligant, Iron Moth, which is Terra Grass and Terra Fairy, Amoongus, Garganical, Garganaco, however you want to say it, Slowbro, Galar, Mousehold, Dragonite, Frostlass, Arbeliva, and Berserker. So a couple of things you immediately notice about Drewby's team, the first of which being he does not own a fairy type. The only fairy type on his team is going to be Iron Moth, once it is Terrid, which in this matchup, I do highly anticipate to be fairy type. The other thing is that he doesn't have a steel type because he has Berserker and Berserker quite simply does not count. So Walking Wake is going to appreciate both of these facts this week and Walking Wake is going to be a very, very important piece to win this game. Another thing you'll notice is that he does have three grass types, none of which appreciate Walking Wake at all. Amoongus can be a decent enough switch in if he is a Soul Vest, but Hisui and the Ligand and Arbeliva obviously do not want to switch in on a Hydro Steam and then take a Flamethrower, especially not in the the sun. On the other side of things, Palafin is very difficult for us to deal with, so we do have to kind of play with the idea that Sun is going to be very crucial in this matchup, and Sui Lilligant can take advantage of that with Chlorophyll. I, I actually anticipate it to be Chlorophyll instead of Hustle in this matchup. That being said, I actually really, really like our matchup, and that's why I was able to build such a fast and what I think is a great team this week, because I think for the most part, every threat that Drewby has, we have some sort of an answer for. The only thing that, in my opinion, can get super scary and super out of hand is if he brings a pretty creative Dragonite set, maybe like DD weakness policy, uh, E-Speed, Earthquakes, so something like that. Like just, there, there's a lot of moves Dragonite wants, and if he nails the exact moveset that does well in this matchup, that is the Pokemon that I am personally the most afraid of. As far as the team we're bringing, we are going to start off with our Terra Captain. As per usual, the captain of the team, Spanky, is going to be making an appearance this week. We are a really cool set this week, Terra Water, which is going to be there to alleviate pressure off the Palafin, and we're just going to be bulk up three attacks. Drain Punch for Longevity, Rage Fist, because Rage Fist is broken and then Ice Punch that way we do not get walled by the Dragonite. And we are really cool. We are Covert Cloak plus Vital Spirit. Rust Talk did very well in this matchup, but I think I like Vital Spirit a little bit more because it allows us to switch in on the Amoongus if we are not Terra. On top of that, Covert Cloak makes this our guaranteed check to Garganical. That Pokemon cannot do shit to us and we get a free bulk up on that Pokemon guaranteed every single time. The worst it does is get rocks up in our face, which I think that we can deal with just fine. We have 240 40 HP, 20 attack, 140 special defense with a careful nature and 100 speed. This allows us to live two Iron Moth energy balls, assuming they are not Terra Grass, which I highly do not anticipate Terra Grass in this matchup. We can outspeed things, creeping us, creeping Drooby, creeping Zapdos, very, very specific, but essentially we're creeping speed creeps. And then we put the remaining 28 into attack. And this is going to be the win con. This is going to be how I highly anticipate we win this game. We can get a bulk up off on the Garganical very, very easily. And if we are not already Terra'd, so Lilligant can revenge us easily. I think this Pokemon is just in a fantastic position. Things that scare me, things that scare me are going to be Amoongus. Amoongus with clear smog, it could be a little bit problematic. But since I anticipate Assault Vest so heavily, we should eventually be able to push past that Pokemon, especially due to the fact that clear smog 
Mach boost Rage Fist, and I will absolutely take Rage Fist boost in this matchup. Lilligan also scares this Pokemon a little bit if we're not already boosted up, just because of how inherently strong that Pokemon is, especially if he's Hustle instead of Chlorophyll. Uh, if we're already teared, we have to be a little careful, because while this Pokemon can take hits from the Palafin, it does struggle with not wanting to Terra because Lilligan exists, Amoongus exists, even potentially Arbeliva exists. So we do have to be very careful with when we Terra. It's going to be very crucial to if and when we win this game. Our next Pokemon was super easy for me to come up with. It's actually our only Iron Moth check in the entire team, and it's actually probably one of the best Iron Moth checks in the game in Galarian Slowking. We are going to be Assault Vest, and just as a general blanket check to everything, this Galarian Slowking does a fantastic job. We are AV with Regenerate. AV to ensure that we take hits from that Iron Moth and obviously Regenerator is a broken ability. And then the combination of our stabs hits pretty much everything on his team and then Grass Knot allows us to not be fodder for the Garganical and actually allows us to prevent him from recovering in our face, assuming he Soul Cures the first turn. Because Grass Knot, if he is Fizz Death, which I highly expect in this matchup, then we can 2 a KO with Grass Knot. We have Sludge Bomb. Sludge Bomb is really important because it can hit both Terras on the Iron Moth as well as the Lilligant. Side Shock plus Future Sight hit the majority of his team otherwise because he does not own a dark type and then obviously like I said grass not for mainly the garganical but it can also be for potentially the palafin we have 32 HP 116 defense 80 special attack 232 special defense with a calm nature and 48 speed we have enough speed down speed a four speed garganical which I don't think will run any speed it shouldn't run any speed in this matchup unless it's for something very very specific maybe to speed creep a potential quagsire but even then it shouldn't really be that much speed because he definitely needs defensive investment on this Pokemon and because of that we will be able to outspeed the Garganical and pressure a two hit KO with Grass Knot at any time that we deem necessary. We can live a plus one booster energy fire blast in the sun from Iron Moth after rocks which is just an insane statistic and basically what that calc is saying is this Galarian Slow King can always check the Iron Moth. There's pretty much no universe in which this Iron Moth gets too out of hand for our Galarian Slowking to deal with. And then we can live a plus one Adamant Life Orb, Lilligan Ice Spinner after rocks. And I do think that was Chlorophyll. I do not think that was Hustle. Uh, this is just a great blanket check to a lot of different Pokemon. If Lilligan gets a little bit out of hand, then obviously Glowking can take immediate pressure off of that. Glowking just does so unbelievably well in this matchup. There is not really a great way for him to break past it other than Dragonite, man. Dragonite just does so well in this matchup. Uh, and it is the primary way to push past Glow King. Our next Pokemon is a really cool Zapdos set that I'm excited to bring to you guys. Roost, Volt, Switch, Thunderbolt, and Air Cutter. I talked about a couple of holes in Druby's team with no Seals and no Fairies. And obviously with the Glow King with no Dark, another role that he is missing, he has no Ground type. And Zapdos is here to take advantage of that. People often forget, while it is a defensive piece, Zapdos is very, very offensive. 125 special attack is no joke. This Pokemon, while I do love Annihilate, and Annihilate can switch into the Amoogs potentially. And once we have the Terra off, obviously that is not an option anymore so this is going to be our secondary switch into the Amoongus. We have the safety goggles to ensure that we do not get spored. Roost is here for longevity, Volt switch for momentum obviously, Thunderbolt because general stab that does very very well and then Air Cutter is really cool. Air Cutter always Okos the Lilligan because obviously it's four times weak and it also always pressures a three hit KO on the Amoongus and if he is Fizz Death not Spud Death which is definitely possible then we actually pressure a two hit KO. Now if he is AV which is what I'm expecting obviously we don't do that much with air cutter at all and it could be a little bit of a problem but two air cutters in that instance would force a switch and obviously i don't like hurricane because spoiler alert we are gonna be ending up bringing sun we can live a banded wave crash from a palafin hero and then we have some speed for the potential speed creeps which i do think are very likely with something like the dragonite uh, and then we went the rest into special defense the modest nature allows us to three hit KO the amoongus if he is spud death so that's the Zapdos set. I love this Zapdos set. I think it's going to do very, very well for us. It will gather momentum for us pretty easily, man. Uh, and, and the fact that we have static for something like the Dragonite is going to be very clutch, especially this is also here to help with the potential Lilligan. If it's not boosted up, Ice Spinner is not going to kill us and we can get an Air Cutter off and Oko that Pokemon. This Zapdos might even be our lead Pokemon depending on what six Pokemon we see brought. Our next Pokemon is going to be our primary breaker in Walking Wave. We're going to be Specs this week 
finally, I'm, I'm so sick of bringing this Pokemon and not bringing specs, and we're Draco, Dragon Pulse, Hydra's team, and Flamethrower. I decided this dude's got no immunities. We're going to try our hardest to break with this Pokemon, especially due to the fact that he has no fairy type. We're going to throw off Draco Meteors. We're going to throw off Dragon Pulses, at least until we force the Iron Master Terra. We're going to do massive damage. We have 180 special attack, 104 special defense, and 224 speed timid. We are going to get the speed photosynthesis boost, and our speed allows us to outspeed the Hisuian Lilligan. We can live a Terra Fairy, D Gleam, or Terra Blast from the Iron Moth, and then we went the rest into special attack. Which which still allows us to get the speed boost from Protosynthesis. We just have to position this Pokemon well early and force KOs with this Pokemon to try to damage things to put in range of Annihilate. Obviously, if he is going to be a Viamungus, we need to find that out early and we need to play around that accordingly, but Draco Meteors are going to be free early. And we are going to be speed boosting just to outspeed something like the Iron Moth, which can get out of hand really easily. I do think special attack boosting would have been so nice in this matchup, but I'm very scared of Iron Moth, right? I'm very scared of Iron Moth. Maybe I should have went modest. Maybe I should have went plus special attack nature, but I don't know realistically what's better and what's not. So I went with plus speed nature, especially due to the fact that we are specs. Our next Pokemon is going to enable Walking Wake another potential lead. We're going to have Torkoal, Stealth Rock, Rapid Spin, Lava Plume, and Clear Smog. Stealth Rock is obviously going to be very nice on a team that lacks removal. Rapid Spin to remove hazards if the Frost Slash isn't bright, even if it is bright. We can Lava Plume and kill that Pokemon in the Clear Smog to prevent setup on something like the Lilligan if it wants to try to set up late game, the Dragonite especially. But other than that, we are here for the Drought. We have 104 HP, 244 defense with a bold nature, and 160 speed. Our speed allows to outspeed our Beliva, which I don't think will come into play, but if it does, we'll be able to kill that Pokemon. And then we just went with Fizz Step. Other than that, Torkoal doesn't have a super big role in this week, other than getting hazards up, keeping hazards away, and setting the sun for wake. And then our last Pokemon, we were so weak to Dragonite, I had to bring one dedicated check. And this was tough because I wanted to bring Bramblegast into no removal team but I didn't feel like I could do it and, and be confident that I could beat Dragonite. So we have a dedicated check to Dragonite. We have Rocky Helmet, Iron Defense, Body Press, Ice Spinner, and Rest Bronzong. His team is primarily physical, and actually, if we get some Iron Defenses up, he has a very, very tough time breaking this Pokemon, even with the two turns of Rest. Uh, there's very seldom a situation where our Bronzong gets in trouble. The only big issue would be like uh, if we Iron Defense up and then for some reason the Lilligant can boost past us. That, that's the only real issue I could see. But just as a Dragonite check, this should do the job. We're Levitate just because Earthquake on Dragonite is so prominent. I did look into an AV heat proof set for the Iron Moth, but we still get two KO KO'd in the sun, so there's no point in that. And that is going to be the team against Druby. Guys, akin, be sure to check him out. He makes such fantastic content. I cannot gas it up enough. I love the team that we're bringing. It was so easy for me to build, and hopefully in practice, it functions just as well as I anticipated too. Glow King should be very difficult for him to break in the combination of Annihilate plus Walking Wake should prove to be very overwhelming. Depending on what he brings, we'll either lead Zapdos or Torkoal. If we lead Torkoal, we're going to get racks up early. If we lead Zapdos, we're going to Volt Switch turn one and see what happens from there. I think probably what's going to happen is if he leads Garganical, I might lead Torkoal just to get racks up, just so we guarantee trade rocks at bare minimum. Let me know if you guys are as excited as I am. I highly doubt it. I'll be honest. Be sure to leave a like on the video for support. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. signing off.